Steve, right? It's, it's like it's got generation after generation after generation, generation. And you may think it's crazy. Usted puede que crea que es loco. You may think like, why would they do this? ¿Por qué lo harán esto? It has a very important purpose. Tiene un propósito bien importante. It's to follow the DNA. Es seguir el DNA. Know who you come from. Saber de quién tú vienes. And so we got two disciples that decide to write the genealogy. Tenemos dos discípulos que deciden escribir la genealogía. Matthew, Mateo, and Luke. Y Luca. Luke chapter 3 has the, gene the genealogy that is between Mary and Joseph. And Matthew speaks from, it, from the level of Joseph. But the problem was that they were related to each other. El problema era que ellos eran familia. Both Mary and Joseph were family. Therefore, their genealogy was almost exactly the same. Except for three generations. Excepto por tres generaciones. And that's where the division came in. They were cousins. Eran primo. They were family. Eran familia. And therefore, the, the, the genealogy could be followed. So Matthew writes the genealogy from one aspect, and Dr. Luke writes it from a different aspect. Mateo lo escribe de un, de un lugar diferente a Luca. Luke goes all the way down to Adam. Luca va hasta Adam. Follows Jesus' genealogy to Adam. Matthew does not. Matthew stops in Abraham. Mateo se detiene en Abraham. But Matthew had the best of the genealogies. Mateo tenía lo mejor. See, Matthew was a tax collector. Mateo era un hombre que colectaba el impuesto. Do you know who's hated the most? ¿A quién usted cree que se odia más? The IRS. How many of you love the IRS? Nadie. ¿Cuánto le gusta el IRS? Nadie se levanta las manos, right? In fact, uh, you don't like them because if you don't pay, what happens? They'll take whatever is yours. Se quitan lo que es tuyo, right? So I need you to see this story. Quiero que te vea esta historia from the point of view of where the Bible tries to take us. Donde la Biblia trata de llevar. Luke is a doctor. Luke es un doctor. So when, when, Jesus, when Jesus sees Matthew at the first time, cuando Jesús ve a Mateo la primera vez, he's collecting taxes. Está colectando los impuestos. Nobody pays their taxes happily. Nadie paga los taxes con una sonrisa. I'm so happy I'm paying the taxes. Estoy tan alegre que estoy pagando mis impuestos. Nobody does that. People were standing in front of Matthew. Estaban parados en frente de Mateo. Here. Because all the taxes were going to Rome. Los taxes estaban yendo a Roma. Los impuestos estaban yendo a Roma. And they pay their taxes and they look at Matthew. I hate you, you tax collector. Te odio. Right? And you're okay if you're going to get money back from your taxes, but how many of you know if you know you're not getting taxes back, you wait till the last day of tax, right? Pero al último momento, right? Or you ask for an extension, right? Because you hate to have to pay it. Now imagine all these people surrounding Matthew, toda persona surrounding a Mateo, and suddenly Jesus gets online. Y Jesús se pone en la línea. Because you, how many of you know that Jesus did pay his taxes? ¿Cuántos saben que Jesús pagó su impuesto, right? Jesus gets online to pay his taxes, but he didn't just get in line to pay taxes. No se puso solamente para por el impuesto. There was a calling on that tax collector. Había un llamado en aquel que estaba cobrando los impuestos. I love this. I just love this because the Bible is just full of such jewels, right? When he gets to Matthew, cuando llega Mateo, and everybody's surrounding him, todo el mundo está sorondeándolo, the, the hypocrites were all around, right? The Pharisees, the Pharisees. Jesus looks at Matthew, Jesús mira Mateo, he doesn't tell him, no le dice, today first give your life to me and then you can follow me. Dale tu vida a mí, me puedes seguir. No, he says to Matthew, follow me. Sígueme. Didn't preach a message, didn't give him a leadership a, a class, no le dio un clase de liderato, no le predicó un mensaje, solamente le dijo, sígueme. He said, follow me. Matthew, the Bible says, got up, Mateo se levantó, closed the book of taxes, said, I will not do this no more, no haré esto más. I don't know if you understand when you hear the voice of God calling you, cuando tú oyes la voz de Dios llamándote, 
You leave everything behind. Tú dejas todo atrás. So follow him para seguirlo. Matthew had no, no kind of instructions. He just heard the voice, oyó la voz. Of the king of kings, the rey de reyes, señor de señores. And he followed his voice. And the Bible says that from that day on he followed Jesus. Desde día, él siguió a Cristo. Luke did the same thing. But Luke was very... How I many you know what I'm talking about, right? He was a doctor, era un doctor. He was from the upper echelon. If you follow his genealogy, si tú sigues la, la genealogía de, Lu, de Lucas, he came from a very prestigious family. Vino de una familia prestigiosa. You know how sometimes you come from a very prestigious family, you think everybody else is like below you. Tú te crees que todo el mundo está debajo de ti. Well, that was my brother Luke. But even those people Jesus calls to be disciple. Pero esa gente también Dios llama a ser discípulo. Because the point is that by the time Jesus left, he had changed Luke's life. Había cambiado la vida de Lucas. But when Luke writes the genealogy, cuando Lucas escribe la genealogía de Jesús, he leaves out part of the story on purpose. Deja parte de la historia a propósito. Now, when you see genealogies in the Bible, the, the women are never mentioned. Las mujeres nunca son mencionadas en la genealogía. It's the dads, father and this father and that father. Women are not mentioned. Luke follows the genealogy according to the Old Testament. Hello. Luca lo siga de acuerdo al Viejo Testamento, and he leaves out the women. Say with me, the women. women. But Matthew? Matthew says, Mateo dice, oh, I'm going to include them in there. Yo la voy a meter a ellas ahí. Why? Because he said without them, the story of Jesus is not complete. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Without the moms, there is no story. There is no men. There is no genealogy. It takes a female to birth something. Se coge una mujer da la luz algo, right? In order for you and me to be here right now, para que tú y yo estemos aquí ahora mismo. I remember going to a church and, and the pastor told me, why do you call your wife a pastor? I said, because she's a pastor. Well, I don't believe in women ministry. Yo no creo en el ministerio de las mujeres as pastors. I said, you don't? So we leave half of God's people to the side when we don't have enough in this side And he said, yeah, but the Bible, I said, come on, come on, come on, let's, let, let's, let's discuss the Bible. And I told him first, my wife is not a pastor because she's married to me. Ella no es pastor porque está casada conmigo. La pastora es pastora porque ella tiene licencia. She has her own license. She can marry you, puede casarte. She can do everything I can do. Ella puede hacer todo lo que yo puedo hacer. And I believe in her calling. Yo creo en su llamado. I believe that God called her. Yo creo que Dios la llamó. And if you heard her preach, she's a powerful preacher, una predicadora poderosa. She just decided to sit down and listen to me. I don't know why, right? <laughs> But I think we have a problem with the fact that females are part of everything that has to do with Jesus. They were so important, so tan importante, that the first prophetic word, la primera palabra profética about Jesus was given to Eve, fue dada a Eva. That's how powerful they are. Esto de poderosa era. And so Luke decides, I'm going to leave them out because I'm going to keep it according to the Jewish tradition. Luca dice, no va a poner las mujeres, las va a mantener de acuerdo a la tradición judaica. But, but Matthew, Mateo dice, he saved me, él me salvó a mí. I was worthless, yo no valía nada. I was nobody, yo no era nadie. I was a tax collector, they hated me, me odiaban. But he called me anyway, me llamó como quiera. Why would I leave out the women? ¿Por qué dejar las mujeres? When they are just as important, son tan importantes as I am. I love it. The story even gets crazier. La historia se pone más difícil. When you read it, you say to yourself, it all started in Genesis. Todo empezó en Genesis. If you got my Genesis 2.17 up there, watch this. 
Pero el, del árbol del conocimiento del bien y del mal no comeréis. Porque el día que de él comas, ¿qué dice? He said, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day you eat of it, you surely will what? Now, now, I want you to see this. Yo quiero que te vea esto. Because who ate of the fruit first? I'm sorry, girls. Curiosity, right? El primero que comió de la fruta fue Eva. La curiosidad de una mujer, right? They see things differently than we do. We see everything in black and white. They see things in colors. Ella ven todos en colores, nosotros vemos las cosas en blanco y negro. And Eve is looking at the fruit, está mirando la, a la fruta. And the devil, el diablo, a serpent, una, en forma de una serpiente, tempted her, la tentó. We don't know if it was, it was months that he was doing that, years that he was doing that before he fell. But she falls. But you notice something, nota algo. If you read the story, si usted ha leído la historia, and you should read it in details, lea en detalles. That after, after she ate, she still did not see good and evil. It was when Adam ate that their eyes were open. Fue cuando Adán comió que sus ojos fueron abiertos. Notice, notice as people listen to me, the word is powerful. If Adam would have never eaten, si, si Adán no hubiera comido, sin would have never entered. Pecado no hubiera entrado. Oh my God. I'm trying to teach you something. Why? ¿Por qué? Because it's through the male, es a través del hombre, the head of the home, la cabeza del hogar, that sin comes down, que el pecado viene. If Adam would have said, no way, girl, he said, I'm not going to eat. And if Adam hubiera dicho, no lo voy a comer, they would have not known sin. But the minute Adam ate, el momento que Adam comió, the Bible says, la Biblia dice que sus ojos fueron abiertos, their eyes were open. And suddenly, the genetic compound of their life was destroyed. Y de momento, les la composición genética fue destruida. Their genes became completely corrupted. Su genéticamente fueron todo su su DNA fue destruido. They became people who are now going to be fallen. Vinieron a ser gente que ahora iban a ser gente caídas. Now watch, right? Because it's when you see this, you realize why Matthew writes what he writes. Que Mateo escribe lo que escribe. Because Matthew understood that to whom much is given, much is expected. Mateo entendió que al mucho se le da, mucho que se le espera. So let's go into Matthew's for a minute. And we're going to read just a few of the genealogical processes. Vamos a leer alguna de las... Genealogía de él. Let's read the first one. De la genealogía de Jesucristo, hijo de David y hijo de Abraham. The book of what? Of the genealogy of who? The son of what? So where does he go back to? Abraham. Say with me, Abraham. He doesn't go back to Adam. He goes back to Abraham. Because it's through Abraham that the Jewish people first start being a nation. Es a través de Abraham que el pueblo judío viene a ser nación. Now remember Micah said he would become the king of what? Israel. Micah dice que vendría a ser el rey de Israel. Now, the first thing you see that he says he had to be of the son of who? David first. Was David born after Abraham or before Abraham? After Abraham. David nació después de Abraham, right? He was king of what? But yeah, why is it that they're mentioning David? Porque están mencionando a David. First, primeramente es David. Because he was what? He was a king, era rey. And the Bible, prophetically, prophetically, God told David, you will always have an heir inside your kingdom. Siempre te dan un heredero en tu reino. So the Bible starts not with the father, He starts out with the king. Why? Because Jesus is king of kings and Lord of lords. Porque Jesucristo es rey de reyes y señor de señores empiezan con rey. Now let's go to the next part. Because I want to show you something, right? Read it with me. Judá engendró de Tamar a Fares y a Saras. Fares 
a Esrom y Esrom a Abraham. It says Judah begot Perez and who? Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron and Hezron begot who? Now this is, listen, if Netflix was going to make a movie, this would be a good movie. Right? All right? Or <laughs> it don't matter. One of those companies that make movies, that, that, this would be a, a Grammy Award, right? Esto ganaría un Grammy, because this is a story that's ridiculous. Luke totally doesn't even put this up. Luca no pone esto. Why? Because you see that guy, Judah? Ese hombre Judá. Judah is one of what? The tribe of Israel, las doce tribus de Israel. He is the least of them, el menos de todos ellos. But there is a really fascinating story behind this. The reason Luke leaves it out, la razón por que Luca no habla de esto, is because Luke knows if the people find out that this is Jesus' genealogy, they won't follow him. Si el pueblo conociera que esta es la genealogía de, de, de Cristo, no hubieran seguido a, a Jesús. Judah was one of the, of, of the 12 disciples. Tamar, Tamar is his daughter-in-law. Say with me, daughter-in-law. Tamar es la, la, la yenna, la nuera. Yenna, nuera, no, nuera. Tamar es la nuera, okay, he's his daughter-in-law. What happens here, lo que pasa aquí, is it's really complicated, it's complicado. Because Judah had three sons, tenía tres hijos. And the law said, la ley decía, that if one of them dies, si uno se moría, the widow would marry the next son. La viuda se casaba con el próximo hijo. And then she would have a baby from him, tenía un bebé de él. And then that baby would inherit the first son that dies, Inheritance. But because the second son, now the Bible says that God killed the first one because he was evil. Say with me, evil. God said, you out of this world. Right? So then the next child, the próximo hijo, he refused to give a baby to Tamar. He had sex with Tamar, tuvo sexo con Tamar, but when he was ready to have, you know, that moment in life, I don't want to get into details, but you know about it. He pulled out, and the Bible says he poured on the ground. And God, what did God do? Boom, kills him right there. El Señor lo mata ahí mismo. En ese momento, el segundo hijo tuvo relaciones sexuales con Tamar, y Dios lo mata en ese momento, porque no quiso darle hijo a Tamar para que Tamar tuviera heredad. And so the father, Judah, el padre Judah, Hides, esconde the third son, esconde el tercero. I told you this makes a good novel, right? It would make a good movie, una película buena. He hides the second son from her. One is because the son was still a teenager, todavía era niño. So now he had to wait for him to grow up, tenía que crecer, to then have relationship with her and bring an heir. But she hid him, ella lo escondió, escondió su, el, él lo escondió al último hijo para que no tuviera relación con Tamal. You like this story? You thought it was just genealogy. No. Then he shuns Tamar. He throws Tamar out. Bota a Tamar. La saca del lugar. He doesn't want her in his household. No la quiere en su casa. Tamar dresses as a prostitute. Is the story getting really juicy? Right? Tamar dresses as a prostitute. Tamar se viste como una prostituta. And she is where the prostitute sat. Donde está la prostituta. She did it so good that Judah comes by, the, the father-in-law, el, el, el suegro pasa, sees her, la ve a ella, and tells her, le dice, you want to have sex with me? ¿Quieres tener sexo conmigo? He was one of the what? The 12 tribes. So he has sex with her, and the girl was not stupid. You got to be careful, right? La nena no era estúpida. La nena dijo, tú vas a tener sexo conmigo. He said, I need you to give me something that reminds me of who you are. So he gives her what? He gives her the signal, right? He gives, her, gives it to her, and she takes it. 
Six months later, her belly's getting like that. Seis meses después, la vajiga se está poniendo así. Right? And the, fa the, the father-in-law sees her and says, we're going to stone her for adultery. La vamos a pedrear por adulterio. Isn't that crazy? And she said, really? You want to kill me for adultery? Here. He's here in Signia. These are your babies, boy. Esta son tu bebé. And he had to go before the people and acknowledge that they were his children. Tuvo que ir delante del pueblo y decirle al pueblo, that is my babies. Here I was justifying myself. Estaba justificando. To the point to put her to death para poner la muerte. And yet the culprit was who? Him himself. Because sometimes we're pointing fingers at everybody. We think that everybody's bad. Todo el mundo es malo. Look at the sin he did. Look at the sin she did. You have no idea what's in the background of your life. Tú no tienes una idea de lo que hay detrás de tu vida. If people only knew who you really were, you would lose a lot of friends. Perdí a muchos amigos. But thank God for what? Redemption. Redemption. Luke leaves them out. But Matthew says, I'm putting this story in. Powerful, right? And then the Bible says, give me the next verse because it gets even juicier. Isaí engendró al rey David. ¿A quién? ¿A la que fue mujer de quién? This is getting worse by the minute. You have Matthews 1, 5 through 6. Because I want to do that one first. So the Bible says in Matthews 1, 5 to 6. You can open it up in your Bible. And that's right. It's Christmas. We're having a good time, right? Here we go. Salomón engendró de Raab a quien? Y vos engendró de Ru a quien? Y Obed a quien? Now it says Solomon begot Boaz by Rehab. I don't like that name. I will never want to have that name, Boaz. But anyway, by Rehab. Boaz begot who? Obed by who? By Ruth. And Obed begot Jesse. This is powerful, okay? First of all, let's go to Rehab. Rahab. Who is Rahab? King Araya. She's a prostitute. <laughs> See, here's the point. When kings would make their genealogies, cuando los reyes hacían su genealogía, they would leave out the bad stories. They have la historia fea. They would only talk about the good stories. But Jesus didn't come to save what was saved. He came to save what was lost. Jesús vino no a salvar lo que estaba salvo, sino a lo que estaba qué? Perdido. Here we got Rahab. Who wants to talk about his grandmother? I mean, come on. She was a harlot. Right? Era una prostituta. She had sex for money. Tenía sexo para dinero. She was a nobody, no era una nadie. The reputation she had, la reputación que tenía was horrendous. But he's still in the genealogy of who? Jesus. She's not even a Jew, she's a Gentile. No es judía, ella es una gentil. So really, <laughs> come on, something's wrong in this picture because his genealogy was supposed to be all Hebrew. Su genealogía se pone a ser toda hebrea, but now we find a Gentile in there. Not a good one either. No, no, buena. She was a hot mama. Right? She lived in, in the wall. Vivía en la pared. And men would come to her. Los hombres venían a ella. And she must have been cute because she gets married again. Se casó otra vez. And the Bible says it because she understood redemption. La Biblia dice que porque ella reconoció la redención, the Bible says that, that she became part of the Jewish family. Why? Because she saves guardó, the spies that had come, los espías que venían. And the Bible says she put a, a red, 
rope from her window, which signifies the blood of Jesus, que significa la sangre de Cristo. And when that, when that wall came down, con esa pared bajó, Redemption had touched her. La redención la había tocado. Salvation touched her. Salvación la tocó. The Bible says all the walls came tumbling down. Todas las paredes cayeron, but not the walls of Rahab. Because God can take a prostitute. God can take a drug addict. God can take the worst. Yo puedo coger lo peor and make something out of it. Y hacer algo de ello. When you throw people out, God says, don't throw them out, give them to me. Cuando tú botas a alguien, Dios te dice, no lo botes, dámelo a mí. Yo puedo hacer algo con ellos. I did not excite you. Because the junk in my life will make you scared. My past, mi pasado, will make you cringe. And yours too. Don't sit there and look at me like, oh man. Yeah, I am perfect. Some of you walk around like you're perfect. But you're not. You're imperfect people. You think like, oh, a prostitute. Well, there's no difference between a prostitute and a liar. It's still sin. How many of you know it's still sin, right? Todavía pecado. La prostitución y el que miente lo mismo. There is no such thing as a lesser sin to God. They're all what? Sins. But even back then, grace fell upon her. La gracia cayó sobre ella. And what she did, lo que ella hizo, put her in history, la puso en la historia. She never knew, that prostitute never knew, that within her she carried the seed of Jesus Christ. Dentro de ella, ella cargaba la semilla de Jesucristo. Yo, that's big. I know you haven't heard a Christmas story like this. But I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> You're going to see Jesus from a whole different perspective. Te va a ver a Jesús de una perspectiva diferente. Bible says that Solomon from Ahab had Boaz, right? And Ruth, the Bible says that Boaz came together with Ruth. Ruth was another Gentile, otra gente. She was a Moabite, really a Canaanite. Cananita, they, they were worshippers of other gods. Eran unos que adoraban otros dioses. So what is she doing here? ¿Qué está haciendo ella aquí? Why is she in the story? ¿Por qué ella está en la historia? Why is a worshipper of other gods, una adoradora de otros dioses, a Canaanite who hated Jews and the Jews hated Canaanites? Why is she in the story? ¿Por qué ella está en esta historia? See, it's the decisions that you make after you have sinned. Let me tell you something. It's not that you sin. No es que tú cometes pecado. It's not that you fall short of the glory of God. No es que tú cometes caes corto de la gloria de Dios. Your past means nothing to God. Tu pasado no significa nada a Dios. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many know what I'm talking about? Your past, God don't care if you were a drug addict, if you were an alcoholic, if you were a prostitute. I don't care. God doesn't care. Dios no le importa tu pasado. God don't care if you had 10 husbands, 15 husbands. Si tú tenías 15, ya, pues, he don't care. He just cares what happened after the blood of Jesus came upon you. ¿Qué pasó después que la sangre de Cristo vino sobre ti? Did it change you? Te cambió. She comes and she follows Naomi all the way into where? Bethlehem again. <laughs> Bethlehem. We're back in Bethlehem again. She follows Naomi to Bethlehem. Her husband dies and she goes to Bethlehem where her, where her mother-in-law. And her mother-in-law say, no, no, you stay over there. Don't come here to Israel. No venga a Israel. Be with your people. Está con tu pueblo. But something inside Naomi, algo dentro de Noemi, was saying, no, no, I got to go. There is something that I'm going to burst. Hay algo que yo voy a dar la luz that is related to the Savior, que parte del Salvador. And when Naomi's telling Ruth, stay, Ruth tells her, no way. I'm going to where you go. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. Tu Dios será mi Dios. Tu pueblo será mi, mi, mi pueblo, dice Ruth a Naomi. And she goes. And see, when you're obedient to God, cuando estés obediente al Señor, how many know what I'm talking about? 
How many, how many ever were obedient to God even when you didn't want to be? How many? I don't put both of my hands up, right? Both of my hands up. There are moments you don't want to be obedient. You just become obedient because you, you're just going to respect God. You're going to honor God. And, and here is this woman. Ruth obeys God. And by obeying God, obedeciendo a Dios, she becomes part of the genealogy. Bien, I said parte de la genealogía of Jesus. Just because she was obedient, the Bible says that she met Boaz. And I'm telling you, one of the greatest men in history, uno de los hombres más poderosos en la historia. Because when you think it's over, God says, no, it's not over. I'm about to start something new in your life. Estoy para empezar algo nuevo en tu vida. All my single ladies here, when you think it's over, I'm not going to find a man in my life. No van a contar un hombre en mi vida. God is telling you, yo te estoy diciendo, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Busca primeramente el reino de Dios, justicia, y todo se estará añadido. Listen, your man is coming. All the single girls. Your man is coming. But pastor, I was married. It don't matter. God can start all over with you. He started all over with Ruth. And she falls into the genealogy of Jesus. Now give me the one that I had in Matthew 1.6. All right, here we go. Isaí engendró al rey David. El rey David engendró de la que fue mujer de Urias, ¿a quién? And Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who was, had been what? Had been what? The wife of who? They don't even use Bathsheba. He should have said just Bathsheba. He did for the other ones. Isn't it the truth? Did he not use the name Right? Rahab, Ruth, Tamar, but why not Bathsheba? ¿Por qué no menciona la Bathsheba? A ver, sabe. Mencionó todas las otras, pero dice la mujer de quién? De Urias. Oh my God, I don't. I want you to hear me. This is so powerful. The story gets even worse. What a plot. What a twisted tree this is. Is this a twisted tree or what? No es esto un árbol torcido. Like, think if that was your genealogy, esta tu genealogía, you'd probably be trying to erase a lot of it. The Bible says that Jesse begot David, the king. I would have left out the king. But the Bible doesn't leave it out because what? We are justified by what? By faith. Somos justificados por la fe. David was justified by what? By faith. He mentions him and it says, David the king begot Solomon by her. Look at what he says. By who? By her. Doesn't he have a name? Ni nombre. It's like, yeah, her. Who? Her. You date somebody, you don't even want to mention their name again. You just say, yeah, her. I used to date her. She was my girl. Her. But what's her? Well, era la novia mía, pero no quiero mencionar el nombre, porque cada vez que yo veo ese nombre me cae mal. I don't even want to mention her, because every time I hear her name, it makes me sick. I don't want to hear. I don't want to know nothing about her. It's about her. <laughs> and Matthew says, yeah, her. Her. But who her? Oh, okay. I'm going to explain who her is. She was the wife of who? Uriah. So it wasn't even David's wife? No era la esposa de David. So you mean to tell me after Uriah dies, después que Urias muere, she still doesn't become his wife? Chew, I like the silence in here. You're like, when you're watching the movie, you're like, shh, get the popcorn, get the popcorn. Right? Get the soda. I don't want to miss this. Don't bother me. 
This is getting better. So Uriah's wife, because it wasn't his. This boy was bad. Say with me, David was bad. bad. Say David was bad. bad. Diga conmigo, David era malo, de verdad. David era malo. ¿Cuántos saben que David era malo? How many Psalms did he write? 87% of the Psalms belong to David. 87% de los Salmos pertenecen a David. So many of them, you read them today. Muchos de ellos lo leen hoy. You sit there and you read. Jehová mi pastor, nada me faltará. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You would think the guy that wrote that, man, that guy's got to be a saint, right? El que habita el abrigo del Altísimo morará bajo la sombra del Omnipotente. He who abides under the wings of the Almighty. I mean, what a statement. Isn't that a statement from a prophet, from somebody who's big? No, eso es algo de alguien que es grande. Would you think just anybody wrote that? ¿Tú creerías que cualquier persona escribió eso? No, no. You would say to yourself, tú te dices tú mismo, whoever wrote that, man, must be right in the face of God, in the throne of God every day. Ese que escribió eso tiene que estar en el trono de Dios todos los días. Well, no. Not hardly. By the way, he had eight wives. Tenía ocho esposas. He really didn't need Uriah's wife. And as a king, you could get him any way you wanted. Como rey, tú la podías coger como tú querías. If you wanted her skinny with curves all over, you get her. Esa es la que quiero. Right? If you wanted her a little bigger, I give me the one with the big hips this week. Right? He's the king. And el rey, right? He can choose whoever he wants. But he chooses Uriah's wife. Right? And what does he do to him? ¿Qué le hace a ella? He's, listen, he tried to set the man up. He told him, well, brought him from the army, lo trajo del ejército, and told him, go sleep with your wife, go sleep with She knew he was pregnant already. She said, I'm going to stick this one on you, Uriah. <laughs> and he refused. So he gives Uriah, the husband, the note of death. He puts the death letter in Uriah's hand. Le pone la, la carta de muerte en la mano a Urias. Y se la lleva. He takes it to the, to the commander of the army. La lleva al comandante del ejército. And the commander leaves Uriah by himself with the enemy. And they kill him. Y lo matan. Who is this? Who's this guy? ¿Quién es este hombre? Who's this man that the Bible brings up in the genealogy of Jesus? El que está en la genealogía de Cristo. An imperfect man, a murderer, a killer, an adulterer, everything else. But he still comes up as the grandfather of Jesus. No wonder David says in Psalm 51, have mercy on me, God, according to your mercies. Ten misericordia de mí, Señor, acuerdo tu misericordia. Don't take from me your Holy Spirit. No quite de mí tu Santo Espíritu. That blows me away. Because some of us, we fail and we give up. They just caught David. The prophet said, you stole that little sheep from that guy when you got sheep like crazy. You think he went and said, forget it, I'm leaving church, I'm not going to serve God anymore, I don't care anymore, I've sinned, I'm bad, I'm no good, soy malo, no valgo nada, no voy a ir a la iglesia más. David no dijo eso cuando lo cogen, dice, ten misericordia de mí, have mercy on me, God. See, because when you fall, if you're able to understand that even though you fall, aunque tú cambie, you can get back up again, tú te puedes levantar otra vez. You may say, but I've committed the worst sin, el pecado lo más malo. God said, it don't matter what you have done. The blood of Jesus cleanses us of all sins. La sangre de Cristo nos limpia de todo pecado. That's huge. Do you notice something in the pattern of this twisted tree? It's all about redemption. Everyone that's in there failed. Todos que están ahí fallaron. But they all came back and felt redemption. Todos recibieron redención. Why leave out the story? ¿Por qué dejar esta historia? When it's such a powerful story. Matthew says, Luke, you're my brother, but you messed up. I'm putting the truth 
on that stand. And not that Luke didn't write the truth, he just whitewashed it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I remind you, I'm the biggest sinner here. Are you hearing me? Yo soy el más grande pecador aquí. I'm bigger than all of you. Some of you are like, well, Pastor, seriously, I won't go to church no more. What's your problem? If you want an angel to follow to be the one preaching to you? Let me know. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Dios hace usa gente ordinaria para hacer cosas extraordinarias. The tree was twisted. Say with me, the tree was twisted. Diga conmigo, el árbol, el árbol estaba retorcido. Can you put that tree up for me if you got it, if you can, if you can. I, I, need, I, I love it, I love it, look at it. You know what that is? How many of you know what that is? The DNA. That's how your DNA looks. Así que tu DNA se ve. It's what? Twisted. It's a spiral. Why? Because none of you think, you that think you're perfect are perfect. <laughs> You got up this morning and you did see that your wrinkles are coming out. How many know what I'm talking about, right? Right? And some of you saw, oh, look at this mark. I got this mark here. Let me cover it up. Some of you, you put so much makeup on, you can put, you can measure it. There's like a half an inch of it, right? Looks great. <laughs> We're trying to, how many of you know we're always trying to hide our imperfections? Cuántos saben que estamos tratando? I'm one of those people, listen. I'm always, I look at myself in the mirror, I said, oh my goodness, you should not eat that pastel last night. Yo me miré en el espejo y dije, yo me voy a mirar como yo soy pastel de anoche, muchachos, mira vaya la vajilla que tengo. I should not have the apple pie. Or the pumpkin cake. I just want to tell you everything I ate, right? Or the flan. How many of you know the flan? Somebody made me flan, and it was like, it was like I wanted to get up at two in the morning to eat it. A la dos la mañana, I wanted to eat that flan. I, all I could think of, it was hitting me. It was looking at me. And I said, Satan, get thee behind me. Le Satanás. And the flan said, don't worry, I'm not behind you. I'm in the refrigerator. Just follow it. El flan me dijo, yo estoy la refrigerador. And so I, I gently went, I just took a little slice. But then a the little slice said, take another slice. How many of you know what I'm talking about? ¿Cuántos años que hablando, right? And you promised yourself you were not going to eat a lot. Preguntita que no iba a comer mucho. But your sinful nature says, eat, 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 eat. Cómete otro pastelito. Cómete otra capuria. Cómete otra cosa más. You're, and you keep on, right? And all of a sudden, you get, when do you start paying the price? Afterwards. Después. See, that's what sin does to us. It's afterwards that we pay the price for it. And después que pagamos el precio. And you know, every January, you book up the, the gym because you're going to be in the gym this year. I'm going to be in the gym. To make up for all the food you ate on Christmas. Me voy a meter en el gimnasio. Me voy a poner flaquita. What tal flaco? Para que la gente me quiera. Va dos semanas. Y nunca vuelve otra vez. That's our nature. Say with me, that's our nature. It's not that you're imperfect. It's not, it's not, it's not that everybody here does that. Todo el mundo lo hace. Do you know why finally G, Paul had to tell, um, I mean, the, the angels told Peter, kill it and eat it. Because he wanted to eat those pork chops. <laughs> you know what I mean? God said, eat it. That way you don't think you're sinning. But this is our lives. We got to twist the DNA. The tree is twisted. El algo está torcido. Todo está torcido en, our, en nuestra vida. And when we think we have straightened it up, it twists again. Just when you thought, I'm serving God. Estoy sirviendo a Dios. I'm doing everything right. Estoy haciendo todo bien. All of a sudden, one day you get angry and you say French fries and you say, you know, French toast and all the F comes out of your mouth. How many know what I'm talking about? ¿Quién sabe lo que estoy hablando? Cuando usted te creía que todo está perfecto, de momento se te sale una mala palabra de la boca y te empezaste a maldecirle la madre a cuanta persona había. And now suddenly the devil makes you think that you're lost now because you just... How many know what I'm talking about, right? 
And then you say, I'm not going back to church and wipe out like Lisa because I just twisted my DNA. I just twisted my spiritual DNA. But you don't realize that in that DNA runs the blood of Jesus. En ese DNA está la sangre de Jesucristo. In your imperfection, there is the perfect one. En tu imperfección está el perfecto, está dentro de nosotros. You know, what makes us perfect is not us. What makes us perfect is the Holy Spirit that's inside of us. Lo que nos hace perfecto es el Espíritu Santo que está dentro de nosotros. When I see the story of Christmas, it just drives me crazy. And I realize, Acts chapter 5, 30, Hechos capítulo 5, 30. El Dios de nuestros padres. Levantó a Jesús a quien vosotros matáis y colgaron en un madero. The God of our Father raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging him where? On a tree. It started on a tree in Genesis. It pensó en un árbol en Genesis. And it ends out where? On a tree on the cross. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. He... What can I tell you? He takes our imperfections on the cross of Calvary. And he says, it is finished. He dice, consumado as he said, it's over. Saying you will not, not accuse my people anymore. Le dice Satanás, tú no vas a acusar a mi pueblo más. Yo lo he salvado por mi sangre, por la gracia que hay en mí. Fui colgado en un árbol, en un madero. ¿Para qué? Para que el DNA de ellos fuera arreglado. Your twisted tree, your twisted DNA has now been renewed by the blood of the Lamb. Ha sido renovado por la sangre de Cristo. And when God looks at you, he doesn't look at your tree. And no mira tu árbol. He looks at you through the blood of Jesus. Te mira a través de la sangre de Jesús. Therefore, you are always redeemed. Tú siempre estás redimido. He died for our sins yesterday, today. And tomorrow, do you know why he died for your sins tomorrow? Because he knows everything. Does he know the sin you're going to commit tomorrow? ¿Sabe Dios los pecados que va a cometer mañana? How many of you know he knows? So what does he do? He forgives them ahead of time. Te lo perdona antes. Why does he forget your sins ahead of time? So that he don't kill you. Because he wants you, if the trumpet sounded, you to go. Because to God, your yesterday's sins are the same as your tomorrow's sins. Tu pecado de ayer son lo mismo de mañana. Y Dios en su misericordia ha muerto por tu pecado de mañana que él conoce que tú vas a hacer. Y dice, te lo voy a perdonar porque ya yo sé que lo va a hacer. He said, I'm going to forgive you tomorrow's sins because I already know you're going to do them. So I might as well get rid of them now. So therefore, you're always what before God? You're always redeemed. Siempre está redimido delante de Dios. You're forgiven. Está perdonado. That doesn't mean you're going to come out of here and commit sin on purpose, right? It just means that you realize, eh, que significa tu sin, sabe que it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about my tree, how twisted my tree is, how bad my family was. What bad? You, some of us got family who abuse of kids. We have abusers and, and people. Don't worry about them. Worry about the fact that the Redeemer has fixed the tree. He has fixed your DNA. He was born in Bethlehem. Why? Because he had to die. And he redeemed you of all your sins. Say with me, all my sins. Diga conmigo, todos mis pecados están en la sangre de Cristo. Dígalo, todos mis pecados están en la sangre de Cristo. I'm fixed, Vince. Isn't that crazy? Look at me. It don't matter how bad I am. It matters how good he is. 
See, and, and he didn't go under a tree. <laughs> he went on the tree. Big difference, right? <laughs> he's not the present under the tree. He's the present on, on the tree. Could you stand with me? Póngase de pie conmigo. A new year is coming. Un nuevo año viene. And I hope you can make it to New Year's service on Friday. We don't know what's going to happen next year. No sabemos lo que va a pasar el año que viene. We don't know if we're going to be closed again. Si vamos a ser otra vez. I'm still going to be in your face on Facebook or somewhere. I'm going to be in your face. You're going to see my face, my ugly face here. We're praying that they don't close us down. Estamos orando que no nos cierren. But if it happens, as much as I love this building, cuanto yo amo este edificio, this is not the church. You're the church. Esta no es la iglesia, usted es la iglesia. And we're going to stick together. We're going to give like never before. Vamos a dar como nunca antes. Because the whole story of Christmas is giving of yourself. Now, if you're one of those people who have a twisted background, <laughs> you, you all are. Todos tenemos un pasado horrible. How many of you know that you, some of you got, how many got the worst bad background? Because look, I'm going to raise both my hands up because <laughs> It's just, it's just that, it's just that he fixed them. He fixed them on the cross. He said, I got your tree, Jeremiah. Tengo tu albo, Jeremiah. And in fact, I'm fixing the next generation. Estoy arreglando la próxima generación. So they're not under that curse para que no estén bajo esa maldición. Oh, Yeah, maybe you were a drug addict. Maybe you were in the streets, a womanizer. Maybe you were a prostitute. Maybe you were, you were just bad. But if you look at your tree right now, nothing is there. Because he cleaned it up in his blood. <laughs> and he said, I redeem you. You are no longer the same. You're new. Say with me, I'm new. Diga conmigo, soy nuevo, soy nuevo, nuevo, nuevo. El diablo no puede mencionar mi pecado pasado. The enemy cannot mention my past sin because I am made new. Get the religion off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Quítate la religión. This is not just any service. God told me he's going to do something new in your life. Dios me dijo que va a ser algo nuevo en tu vida. God says, I, he changed my message. Cambió mi mensaje. He said, it's not the message you want. It's the message I want. El mensaje que yo quiero. Because I need to do something new today. Quiero hacer algo nuevo. Come on, people. You need to let go in the name of Jesus. Deja ir en el nombre de Jesús. Say, God, I'm letting the past go. Voy a dejar el pasado que se vaya. With your hands up right now. With your hands up. Those who can put their hands up. Amen. Father. Oh my God. By the way, if you need the altar, come up to the altar. Si necesita el altar, venga al altar. If you want somebody to pray for you, come up and we'll pray for you. If you want to pray right there where you're at, we'll pray for you right there. But thank you for coming. If you need prayer, si usted necesita oración, you want to get out, you say, I, I, I want something to happen to me. Quiero algo que pase en mi vida. I'm tired, tired of my twisted genealogy, my twisted life, and I need new experience and redemption. Necesito experiencia, la redención. I, I need something new in my life. Necesito algo nuevo en mi vida. I just can't keep it up. No puedo seguir. God, you are the God of my life. Tú eres el Dios de mi vida. People fear nothing. You have a new DNA in your body. The blood of Jesus will keep you healed. The blood of Jesus will redeem you. You may go through the problem, but you will be able to get through it. Although you may go through the situation, aunque pase por la situación, God said, I'm taking you through it. I'm taking you through it. I'm taking you through it. Father, I come before you. Look at my life, Father. You put this congregation in my hands. 
a twisted tree, a twisted DNA, messed up, with a messed up past, with messed up grandparents and messed up great grandparents. And, but you so love me anyway. Señor, aquí estoy, Padre. Aquí estoy, tu hijo. Con un árbol retorcido, con un DNA retorcido, Señor. Pero tú, Padre, tengo abuelos y abuelas y familia que han hecho cosas horribles, Señor Padre. Pero tú eres mi Dios. Tú no permitirás que esa maldición caiga sobre mí, mis hijos. You will not allow those, God, those, those, those just curses to come down upon my children and my children's children. You are my redeemer. Tú eres mi redentor. You died on a tree, moriste en el árbol, so that the tree could be fixed para que el árbol pudiera ser arreglado. You said it is finished. Tú dices, consumado es. And therefore, God, we surrender all today. Rendimos todo hoy. We give you all our lives. Te damos toda nuestra vida. Take my imperfections, God. Toma mi mis imperfecciones. Take my wrong thinking out. Quita mi manera de pensar mal afuera. Sácala, Señor. Redeem me, redeem me. All, every day, just redeem me with your blood, God. Redeem me con tu sangre, Señor. All my failures, God. Todos mis fallos, Señor, are under the blood. Está bajo la sangre, Señor. My tomorrow failures, my fallo mañana, they're already under your blood, and debajo de tu sangre. Forgive me, God. Perdóname. Wash me in your blood. Lávame en tu sangre. Cleanse me of all my sins. Limpiame de todo pecado. I surrender all to you. Me rindo a ti hoy, Señor. I surrender to you, God. Me rindo a ti, Señor. Make me new. Hazme de nuevo. Make me brand new. Hazme nuevo. Every day, God. Todos los días, Señor, may your blood, que tu sangre, me limpie de todo pecado. Let it clean me of all sins. You're the greatest gift, God. Tú eres el regalo más grande that we can get, que podemos recibir. You're beyond Christmas. Tú eres más allá de la Navidad. You're beyond the birth in Bethlehem. Tú eres más allá del nacimiento en Belén. You're beyond your own twisted tree. Tú eres más allá, Señor, de tu árbol retrocido. Your DNA, tu DNA, Señor. You are God, tú eres Dios. You are our Redeemer, tú eres nuestro Redentor. You are the Emmanuel, tú eres el Emmanuel. You are the King of Kings, eres Rey de Reyes. You're Lord of Lords, Señor de Señores. You are God, the perfect one, tú eres el perfecto. Take us this week home. As we get ready to receive a new year, nos preparamos para recibir un año nuevo. With all its mysteries, con todo su misterio. Without really knowing what's going to happen, sin saber lo que va a pasar. But you know everything that's going to happen. I thank you for this day. Te doy gracias por este día. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Que Jehová te bendiga y te guarde. May he make, may he make his face shine upon you. Que haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti. May he have mercy on you. Que tenga de ti misericordia. May everything your hands touch prosper. Que todo lo que tus manos toquen prospere. In Jesus' name I pray. In the name of Jesus.